Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gidi Ewart, and welcome back to Straight Talk Africa, live from Washington. Once again, it's time to bring in my colleague and social media reporter, Ayen. Take it away again, Ayen. Well, thanks again, Shaka. And we've received tremendous feedback in our STA inbox to this week's question. As we've mentioned, South Sudanese opposition leader Riek Machar returned to the capital on Tuesday and took the oath as the country's first vice president. This leads us to our question of the week, which asks, do you believe that Salva Kiir and Riek Machar will be able to establish a long-term working relationship after Machar is sworn in? Well, before we begin, I'd like to thank all of you for using all of our social media platforms to communicate with us. And another reminder that we are tweeting live today. Use the hashtag VOA South Sudan. And if you haven't yet, please do follow us at VOA Shaka. And speaking of, let's go to a tweet from Amos J41, who writes, the chances are 50-50 because it seems they are afraid of each other. The Sudanese must rescue their country and leave aside their differences. Well, let's go now to another comment from a Facebook fan, Martin Maniel Bugol from Kampala, Uganda, who writes, as far as I know, working with Rick Mashar is difficult simply because he specializes in creating mistrust. It has happened before, and it is certainly going to happen again. My fellow South Sudanese citizens and the world at large, we need everlasting peace in order to restore our, our lost social fabric. Well, Shaka, uh, the theme of lasting peace comes, uh, comes up a lot when speaking about South Sudan. Uh, but how we get there is a different question. Um, so your take. Interesting. Uh, Ambassador Akwong, uh, your reaction? Yeah, my reaction is that, uh, well, these are the parties that uh, have been uh, in, in a war, protracted war for uh, for a long time, two years is a very long time in life of a human being. And uh, the agreement has, has brought them together and brought South Sudanese together. So they, since they have signed the agreement, it is incumbent uh, on the parties to work together. And the president yesterday said that he's ready to work with Riyadh Mashar and uh, is ready to work with the other partners uh, in the region to implement the, the peace agreement. Yes, uh, trust has been lost. Uh, we need to rebuild the trust again between the, the, the warring parties. And uh, by Dr. Mashar going back and taking up his post, I think that is a sign of uh, a new uh, era that these two leaders will work together for a long time as uh, people, of, as leaders of South Sudan. Uh, they will put the uh, South Sudanese above their own uh, personal uh, ambitions, I'm sure, uh, especially President Kir. He has been a man of peace. He has worked uh, quite a long time to bring peace uh, to South Sudan, and he has achieved it this time. So I think this time it is going to be a lasting peace and a lasting trust between the leaders. But how do you respond to some critics who will say, wait a minute? What is it really that uh, has changed this time around? Uh, because frankly, they will say, it's just like what used to be in a place more than two years ago, except that this time around, President Sarvakiu cannot fire his first vice president. Uh, yes, uh, the agreement uh, is very clear in those uh, circumstances. It is very clear and uh, before that, there was not that kind of agreement between the two parties. It was a one party, and the problems started in, in the SPLM. So now this agreement brings the two parties to the executive uh, together. The other issues, whether they are in SPLM or in governance, will have to be discussed uh, throughout the, 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 the transitional uh, uh, period. Uh, what is needed uh, in, in South Sudan politics is people to dialogue, negotiate, conciliate and come to compromise. Mm -hmm. So compromise as it is in the agreement is very important in the, in the, in the future. And uh, knowing President Selfakiri is a, is a man that has been compromising for, for his life. So I'm sure it is, uh, this time is, is different because uh, the agreement is very clear. The roles of the president are clear. The roles of the vice president are clear. The roles of the, the institutions are clear. So I think it will work this time. Are you any 
Yes, uh, let's go to another comment from a Facebook fan, Martin Yalusi from Dar el Salaam, Tanzania, who writes, I don't think Karen Mashar will be able to build a long-term working relationship because they are both working for their own personal interests. They are not working for the South Sudanese people who are starving and dying because of hunger and war. And our last Facebook comment comes from Leverton James Lukodu Moga from Juba, South Sudan. He writes, it is all about respecting the signed agreement to resolve the conflict. We hope Kir and Mashar will make lasting peace for the South Sudanese people. Shaka, again, that, that theme of lasting peace, again, your take. Very interesting. Uh, Reese, of course, uh, your reaction, and I should also add here, by the way, that uh, uh, Ambassador, uh, of course, uh, Akuong uh, rightly says that the deal was signed by four parties, but in fact, consistently, all we hear about are the two parties. And why? Perhaps because they are the ones, frankly, that count in town, because each of them has an army. They are the only two people that even share executive powers. Correct? Yeah, that is true. And um, uh, of course, the peace agreement was signed by more than two parties. There are two main parties, the warring parties, the SPLM two, the SPLM in government and the SPLM in opposition. And uh, the ABD, of course, part of the SPLM and all the political parties, including the religious leader and civil society civil organization. System. So, but the, the main issue here uh, it's not about who signed the agreement, because the reason why including even those uh, stakeholders is for South Sudan to have a lasting peace that each and every son and daughter of South Sudan have a contribution. So our main issue here is peace has come home. And let everybody participate in bringing lasting peace to the people of South Sudan by preaching the message of peace and reconciliation. Our worry, my worry, is that the government, even though now we, they, they, are, they are talking like they say they, we, 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 we will implement the peace agreement, there are things, there are tangible things that show that there is a problem with the government. Juba is not even demilitarized as we are talking now. And it is part of the agreement, you know, that Juba must be demilitarized. The, all the, the, the armed forces will be taken out only what the security arrangement is required. So what but that one has not happened. So Juba is not demilitarized. So what is the role being played by former president of Botswana, Festus Mohai, who is supposed to be in charge of that? He can answer this question if he's now here in the studio, because I have a different mm -hmm. opinion. Uh, we thought that they should be having power to, to, to pressure the government, to respect the peace agreement. You know, but this is not happening. As we know now, Juba is full of military, is militarized to the maximum. And it is not in the peace agreement. The contournement area now, the government is attacking everywhere in, in, in Western Equatoria and, and in Bar el Ghazal. They are attacking every contournement of the SPLM in opposition. The, 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 the JMAC is not saying anything. And there are clear evidence. They do what they lie. They are by letting it in front of the international community. Now, as we are talking, when the Advan team go to Juba, actually, the, the recent Advan team before Dr. Riyak, they were moving in the street of Juba, preaching the message of peace. The government is uh, arresting everybody, including uh, in, in, in Bar el Ghazal, people are arrested. People did, who are just it, preaching that. Did they do that yesterday? They didn't do it yesterday. Are they of doing course, it the, today? Situ the situation was very tense. You never right. know, maybe they have arrested some people. We'll come back to that later. That's why I asked earlier about the issue of a deterrent force. Well, thanks again for bringing us this week's audience reaction. It's a pleasure, Shaka, and that does it for today's social media segment. But the, co the conversation continues online. Just a reminder that we appreciate all the feedback, whether it is in social media form or using other means to communicate to us. Please keep them coming. And if you're a new fan, drop us a line at africatv at voanews.com. Once again, our email address is africatv at voanews.com. Or post your comment on, face on our Facebook page. Enter the keyword Straight Talk Africa. And be sure to visit us online at voaafrica.com 
or you can join our YouTube channel, Sonya Up to VOA TV to Africa, and follow us on Twitter at VOA Shaka. A reminder that the show is streaming live every Wednesday. Go to VOA Straight Talk Africa TV program page on our website, or simply watch us live on your mobile device. Just download the VOA mobile app.